churches than there are fast food places on a particular street. And both, and there are plenty of both, but churches actually outnumbered uh, fast food places. Um, which means, you know, you can find a McDonald's probably within, what, seven minutes of drive from one, you can find another one. <clears throat> and wherever you can find McDonald's, there's usually a uh, Burger King, either right next door or across the street. Because Burger King relies on McDonald's to do all the market research. So McDonald's will find the, the prime spot, and then Burger King says, well, yeah, across the corner, yeah, across the other side is good enough. We'll settle for that. <laughs> <laughs> so it doesn't have to spend millions of dollars to do research on you know, which location is good. <clears throat> All right, so it looks like we have a pretty good understanding of logical operators already. So we'll just kind of make this more formal at this point. Conjunction. Conjunction is nothing more than the English word and. Okay? Um, the mathematical symbol, which sometimes I use in this class, it looks like a TP. Okay? It looks like a little inverted V symbol. In C and other C-derived languages, the conjunction operator is double ampersand. Remember, ampersand, ampersand, not a single ampersand. There is another operator which is a single ampersand, and it's called a bitwise end and not a logical end. It is also a valid operator in C and C++, but it does something that is similar but not exactly the same as a logical end. If you confuse those two, your program may work sometimes and doesn't work the other, other times. It will be very confusing. Okay? So make sure you remember, for logical conjunction, for conjunction it is double ampersand. In most other same programming languages, it is simply spelled out as A-N-D. All right, so one th now that we know how to represent conjunction, we can define what it is. We can now define it using four different cases. True and true is true. False and true is false. True and false is false. False and false is false. In other words, of the two sides of conjunction, the entire thing is true if and only if both sides are true. If at least one side is false, then the entire <coughs> thing is false. Okay? The, the use of the word and is to make things more restrictive. Okay? If you read in <coughs> legal requirements and stuff like that, you know, if they use a lot of word and, 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 it's making the rule very, very specific. Okay, if they use the word or, they're making the rule much more general, which is the next slide. <clears throat> so in logic, we use the word disjunction to represent the English word or. So in this case, I will also give you the you know, alternative representations. In mathematics, it is a, you know, it looks like a V, but it's really not a V. Um, in C and other C derived languages, it's double vertical bar not a single vertical bar, and you already guess it. A single vertical bar is called a bitwise OR instead of a logical OR. It does something that is related to a logical OR, but not exactly the same as a logical OR. So if you use a single bar instead of a double bar, um, your program will seem to work sometimes, and doesn't work some other times, and it's, it also gets very confusing. Uh, in other same programming languages, it is simply spelled out as OR. The four possible combinations is the following. True or true is true. False or true is true. True or false is true. And then false or false is false. So that means with disjunction, the only time it is false is when both sides of a disjunction are fa false. Okay? If at least one side is true, then the whole thing is true. Is that kind of consistent with your understanding of the word or? So not really too compl complicated or surprising in this case. And this is one nice thing about uh, Boolean operators. You can just spell out all possible cases. So when I want to define what is a disjunction and what is a conjunction, I can just enumerate, list out all possible ways of using that operator, and I'm done. I cannot do that with addition, can I? OK, 1 plus 1 is 2. I can do that. 2 plus 1 is 3, that's good. 1 plus 5 is 6, that's good. When do I end? 
It goes on and on and on. It, it becomes, how many integers do we have? Infinite number of integers. An infinite number of integers. And therefore, if I try to define addition that way, it's not possible. But with this, it is possible. Because how many values do we have on each side of a Boolean operator? Two possible values, right? I have two possible values for the left-hand side. I have two possible values on the right-hand side. Now, since they are independent, I can I, I'm only, I still only end up with four possible combinations of those true and false. We have two minutes to go. You know, I know people hate it when my watch is synchronized to the atomic clock because I can tell exactly we have two minutes to go. This is an easy one, negation. It simply means the word, it's the same as not, okay? When we use the word not in English, it means negation. This operator has a symbol that looks like a little cliff in mathematics. In C and C++ and all the other C-derived languages, it is re represented by the exclamation point. In C, in Pascal, SQL, Visual Basic, in most other languages, it is, just, it is simply spelled out as not. Okay? And to define this one, it's very simple. Okay? I have one minute and a half to define negation. Not true is false, and a not false is true. Okay, it's really as simple as that. All right, as an example, as a as a brain twister. Okay, here's a brain twister for those of you who kind of enjoy challenges like this. If I give you only the less than operator and all the boolean operators, how do you? express all the other comparisons. How do you express greater than, equal to, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, and not equal to? That's the brain twister, okay? You can only use the comparison less than. But I also let you use all the Boolean operator, and, or, and not, okay? How do you combine those things so they can express the other comparison operator? Yeah, so you'd like if you were gonna say uh, greater than, you have to say not. You can switch the size. Or not less than. Right. So you have to use you know those things in combinations. You can flip the size if you want to. You know, x, y can go in either way. Okay. So I th I want this to be your kind of brain twister. On Thursday when we come back, you know, I'll give you the answer to this brain twister. Okay. It's a, it's not an assignment. It's not going to be graded. But if you can do this, I think you'll feel pretty good about this class. <laughs> Not that if you cannot do it, you will feel bad about this class. It's just that if you can do it, you will feel good about this class.